What are the INTP subtypes? The psychological subtypes were originally introduced by Victor Galenko in the Socionics model, but Dr. Dario Nardi expanded upon this framework in his latest release book, Decode Your Personality. The four subtypes are the dominant INTP, the creative INTP, the normalizing INTP, and the harmonizing INTP. Victor Galenko's subtype theory explains why you will see that despite the shared type, some people will be more active, others more passive, some more resourceful, and others more reserved. In this video, you'll find a quick summary of the distinctions between the four INTP subtypes according to Dr. Dario Nardi's brain research. I recently interviewed Dario and you can find our interview on my YouTube channel, I'll link it above and below if you're interested in hearing about his journey conducting brain research in the field of personality typology. His work reveals the observable physiological differences in brain wiring for the different psychological types. All right, the first subtype is the dominant INTP subtype. This one is named the ambitious strategist, who tends to be more driven and confident compared to other INTPs. The dominant INTP tends to be comfortable in a managerial role or front-facing leadership position. They may explore entrepreneurship, but most likely prefer to be in an organization that aligns with their values and handles the execution of the small details. The neurological patterns observed with this INTP subtype show a bias toward the front of the brain, as well as the left hemisphere. They do not tend to favor unstructured creativity, and they rely on brain regions active for speaking, listening, and language-based reasoning. These INTPs balance flexing between the context of a matter while holding to a principle. They speak their mind as needed, especially if something contradicts their understanding. When immature, this can make them quite critical, argumentative, and highly skeptical. If something counters a core concept, they may wrongfully ignore it. In person, these INTPs have a strong physical presence. When they're right, it's truly what others need to hear. When they're wrong, it's hopeless to try to change their perspective. The dominant INTP is comfortable with the laws of power in human nature and proceeds patiently with an eye for when and where to use leverage. They strategize at a grand scale with people and ideas. As a side note, for my husband, I think this side comes out when we play games together. He's like one of the sweetest, most respectful people ever otherwise, but when we play a game like Catan, then all of a sudden he's a war dictator who has zero mercy in his strategies to win. All right, the second INTP subtype is the creative INTP subtype. This one gets the name the curious investigator as they are more exploratory and social than other INTPs. This INTP is the most curious, playful, and funny of the subtypes. They may even be perceived as social extroverts with their energy and enthusiasm. This subtype knows how to engage others and get things going by posing interesting questions and offering fun ideas. The brain pattern of this INTP subtype reveals a strong, solid starburst pattern that is typical of fast, intuitive insights. They intake data and quickly play around with it mentally in different ways. These INTPs tend to have strong auditory, linguistic, and visual skills. Often they show a strong goal-focused capacity for speaking with attention to word content and processing more obvious social feedback. The creative INTP enjoys a wide range of interests and can accumulate an incredible database of eclectic knowledge. They will know many details about certain subjects, and potential patterns excite them. One internet search can easily turn into hours of fascinating, but unproductive exploration. In the workplace, they bounce around on various angles of a project. This can come off as scattered or distracted and may result in difficulty attending to official tasks. Professionally, they might struggle to settle into a career. Even in traditional established professions, such as medicine or law, these INTPs will develop their own unique framework and practice it in their preferred way. The third subtype is the normalizing INTP subtype. Dr. Dario Nardi calls this INTP subtype the exacting designer, who tends to be more conventional and specialized than other INTPs. The normalizing INTP are quiet, 
observant specialists who enjoy focusing deeply in one area with an incredible degree of expertise. The brain wiring of this subtype is relatively even across regions of the brain, with some bias toward the back and or left hemisphere. This patterning makes them linear, reflective, and analytical thinkers who process information one step at a time in a very rational way, staying on a particular course once started. For these INTPs, the problem solving done in their work often serves as both work and play in their lives, so they will openly enjoy discussing the ins and outs of their work. The normalizing INTP fits well into large conventional organizations and they favor the steadiness of such a career, as long as their projects are interesting enough to them. Their whole brain tends to be wired around what they know, so they will be unlikely to flex to new ways due to their heavy investment in their own domain. This makes them exceptional and quick to identify potential patterns in data that others would probably not see. They excel at resolving problems in their specialized domain. These INTPs tend to have an understated humor that they employ as a kind of stress release. Their words can have multiple subtle meanings. They tend to be very patient with people and institutional roles, despite having frustrations build up. Additionally, they are most likely to stick to mastering a specific hobby that brings them lots of enjoyment and stress relief. The last subtype is the harmonizing INTP subtype. This one is called the Caring Theorizer, which is more empathic and reflective than most INTPs. These INTPs are most often in a people-helping role that focuses in human interactions, such as a psychologist or diplomat. However, they lean toward a behind-the-scenes style that is more subtle and supportive. The harmonizing INTP tends to be a patient listener and observer that can shift with others' perspectives and needs. Their memory bank is filled with specific detailed case examples of words and behavior patterns. Harmonizing INTPs show one or more diamond-shaped networks that bridge hemispheres in the brain. Each network consists of four to six diverse brain regions that work together, and multiple networks tend to not overlap. Each network is activated by its own mode or angle for addressing a problem. Using such networks, they experiment with questions to then correlate and shift angles until something quote-unquote lands to get the needed effect. One limitation of this INTP is that the day-to-day -day details in maintaining daily life can be a major challenge. In Decode Your Personality, Dr. Dario Nardi notes that this variant becomes the most common at or after midlife. Overall, the harmonizing INTP can step up as a wise, respected community leader who focuses on facilitating others' potentials rather than calculating gains. Usually, they do not consciously experience other people emotionally, but keep a helpful distance amongst any confusion. They can sit with others in a mindful, patient way and assist in problem solving to meet unstated needs. However, they may be prone to suffer an odd stress response afterward by taking on such a burden at their expense. Both Victor Galenko and Dr. Dario Nardi calls this subtype theory a theory on variants of personality. Dario specifically claims it's best to look at these four subtypes as different strengths each type has access to. I'll make some future content about Victor Galenko's framework in Socionics with subtypes. Thank you so much for checking out this video. Until next time, please take care.